You're probably wondering why I'm spinning right now. Well, that's because I'm standing on the world's largest ice carousel located on Green Prairie Fish Lake in Little Falls. Red Lake jumped out to a 14 to 4 lead and you could sense an upset brewing. But Miniota showed why they were the number one seed, out rebounding the Warriors 66 to 37 on their way to a quarterfinal victory. And Fitzpatrick will have at least one teammate in his corner as he tries to make the NHL roster as Bemidji State alum Matt Reed also joins the Wild this year. Legend at the Eel Pout Festival is that it's good luck if you give the fish a little smooch. And I could use some good luck. Now the Warriors lost a pair of key goal scorers off last year's squad, so they're hoping that this year the defense can turn into a little bit of offense. And so for my third time ever riding in an airplane, it was a trip that I would never forget as I was able to take a ride in one of these vintage 1920s airplanes. At the American Legion, they had everything you would imagine in a Thanksgiving dinner, from turkey and gravy to pumpkin pie, they had it all. And don't tell anyone, but I'm having my dessert first. The goal today was for teams to collectively row over 1 million meters, and that's the distance from here to about Kansas City. So I better get going. Brainerd coach Jim Ernster said their goal was to win three games down in St. Paul. The Warriors came up only one goal short, but they definitely surprised some people with their play throughout the tournament. Both John and Gunner were pleased with their pro day performances this afternoon, and now they just have to wait for the phone to ring to see if they get an opportunity at the next level. Reporting from Minneapolis, reporting from Brainerd, reporting from the Excel Center, Anthony Scott, Lakeland News. Scouts from 28 different NFL teams were in Minneapolis this morning for the Gophers Pro Day. Joining the Gophers at their pro day were two Bemidji State defensive backs, Gunnar Olszewski and John Vogler. Sports reporter Anthony Scott has the details on how the two impressed the scouts. The stopwatches were out and cones were set up all over the Gophers practice facility this morning as many NFL hopefuls went through a series of physical tests to try and get the attention of the NFL scouts on hand. For many prospects like Bemidji State's Gunnar Osheski and John Vogler, this is their one and only chance to show scouts what they can do. I was just pumped, you know, I had three months of just working for one day and I think it all came together pretty well. It was a fun, fun environment, um, truly really blessing to participate in front of most of the NFL and I had a fun time. Vogler excelled on the bench press with 16 reps, which would have put him in 20th place out of 51 defensive backs in the combine. He then followed it up with a 32 and a half inch vertical and scouts timed his 40 yard dash at 4.68 seconds. I thought I did exactly what I needed to do to have the opportunity to the next level. I thought I had a great day. I felt really good on my 40 and all my testing um, felt fast and loose. So. Osheski sat out the bench press because of a nagging shoulder injury, but then recorded a 36 inch vertical, which would have been good for 27th in his position group at the combine. And finally, he clocked in at 4.57 on the 40 yard dash. I couldn't even tell you if I did good. I like to think I did good, but it's kind of one of those things you line up and the last thing you see is just looking down. Then you run and you like black out. And you're at the finish line. You're like, how'd I do? Like, I don't know. With leagues like the AAF and the XFL possibly emerging, there are more opportunities than ever for guys like Gunnar and John to have a chance at the next level. It's a fantastic time to be playing football and looking for opportunities after college. You know, the XFL coming out, AAF, and you know, the big thing, the NFL is a big paycheck. Obviously, AF, I don't know exactly what the money is, but, you know, I'd play, I'd play for three hots and a cot. I'd play football for three hot meals and a bed to sleep in, so I'm just looking forward to calling it my job. Both John and Gunner were pleased with their pro day performances this afternoon, and now they just have to wait for the phone to ring to see if they get an opportunity at the next level. Reporting from Minneapolis, Anthony Scott, Lakeland News. Lacrosse is considered to be the fastest growing sport in America and it is slowly making its way north in Minnesota. Brainerd became the newest varsity lacrosse team last year when their squad made the jump from club to varsity. This year the Warriors look to make program history and get their first win. When we stepped up to the high school level you can totally tell the difference between club and high school. It's it's a very big change. It's a lot more fast paced. Balls are flying everywhere. Goals are being scored a lot more often. It was a move that the entire team wanted to make, but the Warriors may have been underestimating the competition level when they made the jump from club to varsity last season. Last year we were kind of like almost in shell shock almost. We were like, wow, like we made it here. 
But yeah, this year we're, we're ready. To, the boys, we're ready to get the dub for sure. I think this year we should be doing pretty good because they got a good taste of it last year and kind of, you know, off a taste of the tempo at least. Brainerd was winless in their first season at the varsity level, but just being a varsity sport has led to more interest. I think that the first year we were a varsity sport, we had more interest than when we were a club. Uh, I know that we had about 36 kids last year, and we are pushing 50 this year. Last year, the Warriors were adding new coaches throughout the season, but this year Brainerd has four coaches that have been committed since day one, and they even have a new head coach in Adam Ekstrand. It kind of adds a base for sure, and I, I like that we have an extra coach and a head coach and a new guy that's learning and that will learn with us. The coaches and the players know the one thing that has to improve if they want to get a win this season. Just working on getting the ball up the field and just ball movement in general. Ball movement, working on ball movement and just finding those open spaces where you can get, you know, that step on the defender where you can get a shot off. If Brainerd is able to get that elusive win this year, it will be a moment that the senior class will never forget. This is my fourth year playing lacrosse and I haven't won a game, so I don't even know yet. So. Yeah, it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting. The whole team, boys will be jumping. Reporting from Brainerd, Anthony Scott, Lakeland News. And now your local sports on Lakeland News at 10. Well, tomorrow is the day anglers across the state have been waiting for as the walleye and northern pike fish seasons are set to get underway. For most people, walleye will be the most sought after fish tomorrow, but you may have to adventure in more shallow water to find them. Enjoy the peace and quiet while it lasts, because... It's almost a half a million people will be on the lakes tomorrow, regardless of the weather, so... But whether you're an expert or a beginner, tomorrow should be a great day for fishing. This year in Minnesota, you can keep up to six walleye, and for pike, you can keep up to ten if you're fishing in the north-central zone. Moving over to the baseball diamond, Cass Lake taking on North Ohm Kellier after the Panthers had that wild victory yesterday. Fourth inning, Cass Lake's Jeremiah Moose grounds one to short, but the throw one hops the first baseman, and Francisco Ortega scores to cut the North Ohm lead to two. Next inning, the Mustangs get the run back as Trace Grundmeyer hits an RBI single right up the middle as Jake Waldo makes it 9-5 North Ohm. Sixth inning, now Cass Lake's Hunter Casa makes a leaping stop on the mound, but decides to go to first with it as T Tim Barthel extends the Mustangs' lead. Northam Kellier would go on to win by 10 against the Panthers. Some other scores in the area, Brainerd had a tough one today against Monticello, and Faustin picks up a close win against Black Duck. Cass Lake, Bean, and Northam Kellier were also doing battle on the softball diamond this evening. Third inning, Mustangs up 7-1, and Riley Guilage hits one past the diving shortstop. Bailey Lindley touches home, and it's 8-1 Mustangs. A few batters later, Cynthia Nelson tucks one just inside the foul line. That would score Guilage, and Nelson ends up at second with a double. Still in the third, and Maggie Dreyer laces one through the infield as Nelson scores to give North Ohm Kellier a 10-1 advantage, and they would run away with this one 29-9 in four innings. Some other softball scores, Park Rapids picks up a win against East Polk, and then on the tennis courts, Bemidji falls just one point short to Alexandria, and in the MLB, the Twins keep it rolling 6-0 against the Tigers today. I don't think they lost the entire time I was here anchoring for AJ. Well, I think we're <laughs> going to want to keep you on board. <laughs> yeah, but, they haven't given up very many runs this week. Nope. Yeah, just I think one to the Blue Jays. All right. Wow. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks, Anthony. Moving over to the softball field, the Jacks were hosting International Falls, and this was your classic pitching duel. One of the few hits came from Annika Takanen in the first inning as she beats out an infield single. Takanen would advance the third, and later in the inning, the umpires call Gracie Fisher safe at first, allowing Takanen to score the game's first run. After the first, it was all about the Bemidji defense. Yvette Morgan charges this ground ball and makes the throw to first for the easy out. Then Gracie Fisher lays out at third to make the stop, and she throws out the runner from her knees to end the fifth inning. Bemidji would win it on that one run from the first inning as Maddie Hansen throws a complete game one hitter. We'll start things off in the bottom of the fourth with two runners on and Bemidji down two. Bemidji's Alex Lazella decides to erase that deficit with one swing of the bat, a three-run home run to right field for Lazella, puts the Jacks in front three to two. Next inning, the Jacks give the runs right back, however, as Brainerd Seth Vots lifts a single to left field. Max Kappas and Brock Peterson score to put Brainerd back in front. Warriors up 5-3 in the sixth inning, but Cole Tatro brings the Jacks one run closer as he hits a towering shot to right field for a solo home run. 
Bemidji down 5-4 in the seventh. The Warriors get some insurance as Brady Anderson knocks a single through the right side as Peterson scores to make it 6-4. Brainerd's Ethan Sonis closed the door on the Jacks in the seventh as Brainerd takes it 6-4.